This is Duke University. This week on Office Hours, the natural and human worlds are constantly in flux from changing weather patterns to information traveling on the internet. Adrian Bejan, a professor at Duke's Pratt School of Engineering, has developed a theory he says unites all such things under one principle. The constructal law has been used by Bejan and his colleagues to explain the design of the Eiffel Tower, animal locomotion, and the layout of the Atlanta airport, among many other observable patterns. In his new book, Design in Nature, he writes, The constructal law is revolutionary because it is a law of physics. It governs any system, anytime, anywhere. Bejan joins us today to take your questions about the science of design in nature. Welcome to Office Hours. I'm James Todd with Duke's News Office, and I am here with Adrian Bejan, the J.A. Jones Distinguished Professor of Mechanical Engineering at Pratt School of Engineering. Professor Bejan, thank you for holding online office hours. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, I'm actually very flattered to be part of this show. Great. So let's talk about uh, the constructal law. It's, it's a big idea. Can you talk about its scope, design in nature? What's the whole scope of the law? Well, the scope is design in nature. In fact, um, uh, any uh, law of physics begins with, uh, with uh, the realization that there is a universal phenomenon out there. That is, uh, a phenomenon means uh, uh, observations uh, of the same kind that occur in the billions. And so uh, the phenomenon is then uh, 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 screaming to be summarized uh, uh, in the form of a simple statement. Why? Because it's a lot uh, easier for the human mind to remember the simple statement than to remember all the observations of uh, this uh, repeating phenomenon. So let's start with the image and then get to the statement. You often use both rivers and trees as, as images, examples of the constructal law. Can you talk us through, we've got an image of the Mississippi River Basin, for example. Correct. So that, that is the beginning of the, uh, of the uh, uh, aha, meaning the realization that there is a phenomenon. Uh, the river basin, the botanical tree, the lightning, uh, the human lung, these are images that uh, look the same. They are tree-shaped, yet they, uh, they, uh, <laughs> they don't care. Of, uh, uh, about what flows. Uh, some are inanimate uh, and huge, others are uh, animate and uh, much smaller. And so uh, all of a sudden, this particular phenomenon, design in nature, um, is, uh, is uh, so universal that it doesn't care uh, um, about the uh, famous division between uh, uh, biology and geophysics. Uh, it is, in fact, a phenomenon just like gravity, or gravitational fall, or um, the conservation of energy in thermodynamics. It is that kind of a phenomenon. And uh, it calls for a, uh, a statement, which means a law of physics of the same uh, kind. So let's, let's give the statement. A, a first principle. And uh, that law, which you had on the screen already, is uh, the... Um, the um, um, the, the tendency in nature that uh, any finite size flow system, finite size means not infinitesimal, meaning something that we can see and touch, um, uh, in, or, uh, in order to persist in time, which means to live, um, must uh, evolve, it must morph, it must contort itself in order to flow uh, more and more easily for greater and greater access over time. So uh, that's the statement in it. You have, uh, you have uh, design, uh, which, which is configuration, uh, the changes in that, which is evolution. And it is uh, nothing but a statement of physics. You can use it to, uh, uh, okay, uh, so that in the dark of the night, with eyes closed, you, you, you see the movie of uh, river basin evolution, you see the movie of, uh, of uh, animal design evolution, you see the movie of urban uh, traffic evolution. You do not need to, to, to observe, to write down, to, um, to f argue with your colleagues. <laughs> so, let's, so let's take, you, you've... The river example, again, I think that one's fairly intuitive. Water's flowing, and the, the configuration are, are the river beds, right? So what does the constructal law say about 
rivers and their, their, their patterns? How do you well, analyze them? The, uh, you heard the law. It says that uh, in big history, this uh, huge uh, flow system, which actually uh, connects a whole area with uh, one point, the area is, uh, in the case of the Mississippi, uh, essentially uh, uh, one third of the United States connected, connected to one point, which is the uh, uh, Mississippi Delta, the mouth of it. Um, uh, this flow um, has been evolving uh, to flow more and more easily or to flow better. Uh, by the way, the constructor law defines what better means in physics. And, um, and there are many features, not many, but there are several important features of, uh, of this uh, flow architecture uh, that um, are predictable or have been predicted from uh, the constructor law. One is that, uh, first of all, the configuration should be tree-shaped. Another is that uh, every uh, uh, mother channel should have, uh, on an average, four daughter tributaries. Four. That's an easy number to remember. Uh, another is that uh, there, are, there must exist a universal proportionality between uh, river width and river depth, meaning wide rivers are also deep. Um, well, uh, this is the way the flow architecture should be. And uh, by the way, should be is, is the key word where the, uh, the label of, uh, of uh, a law, meaning the, uh, uh, it is uh, really the labor of the power to predict. Um, knowing the constructor law, I and my students know uh, how things uh, will be because it is the law. You talk about a tree shaped, so, so you're saying the constructor law says why a tree should be tree shaped. Mm -hmm. well, how, how does it, how, from that sentence you just read that, that states no, the constructor law, how do you get a tree should be tree shaped? No, no, no. I did not. Uh, I said the river basin, right. our flow architecture right, should, should be, be tree shaped. shaped. Uh, an alternative would be for the river basin to be um, nothing but a, uh, a marsh, right. uh, meaning without configuration. Uh, that is a possibility, but it is an extremely um, uh, uh, slow way to flow. And in fact, uh, it is, uh, that is the way to flow uh, as soon as the first uh, raindrops uh, uh, hit the ground. Uh, the ground gets wet. By the way, you see this on a, uh, on the, um, um, uh, along the, uh, the line from uh, first base, from uh, home plate to first base uh, uh, during the baseball game. It's completely uh, flat. It's been perfected. Then the rain comes. And uh, if uh, they don't call the game off, uh, you actually see the river basin uh, 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 be born really uh, right there on the, on the red uh, clay. Um, that is where all the river uh, basins come from. They come from the wet mud, which uh, the seepage through which was replaced uh, naturally because of this uh, tendency called the constructor law. It was replaced by... Uh, um, uh, arborescent or tree-shaped uh, uh, flow architectures, each better than uh, its predecessor. I got you. And so we've used the example of the river, but you also use the example of the tree itself, mm -hmm. the, the ultimately tree-shaped object. And uh, so again, how does the constructal law from this, you know, what you've read about a finite flow system persists in time to live, its configuration must evolve in such a way that provides easier access to the currents that flow through it. How do you take that principle and then look at a tree and say, ah, that's the way it should look. Well, uh, uh, in fact, we took, uh, we took the constructor law and that empowered us to, uh, uh, to act as if we never saw a tree in the garden. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, and uh, it empowered us to actually predict the tree from a, a root or the roots to, uh, to, the, uh, to the canopy all the way to the design of uh, uh, trees of many, many sizes on the forest floor. And here is how. Um, first, in order to uh, use the constructor law in a predictive um, a manner, um, you, the thinker, must <laughs> uh, agree with yourself that you understand what flows. Um, and trees don't move, so... Uh, there you go. So, uh, so what flows through a tree? The tree is, you know, famously, as you say, uh, not walking. So, uh, well, uh, two things flow through the tree. Uh, among many other things, mm -hmm. uh, we're not looking at the birds and the insects and the uh, plagues. Mm -hmm. We're looking at two things. The first is that water flows through the tree. The, the tree is basically um, responsible for putting uh, the water uh, back uh, up there where it came from. Rain comes down, 
water goes up. It goes up not only through, through evaporation from the surface of the ocean and the lakes, it really uh, gets, uh, uh, gets its way upward uh, through this uh, additional design, which comes, of course, uh, from the birth of the biosphere, which is uh, vegetation. So vegetation uh, is a flow system for water flowing upward. Um, and so the flow configuration uh, it must be such that, uh, that it facilitates that flow. Well, um, my, our conclusion, because we published this in the Journal of Theoretical Biology, uh, our conclusion is that uh, after some um, um, back of the envelope uh, pencil and paper uh, application of uh, invocation of the constructive law, the conclusion is that the, um, the, um, the vegetation architecture is uh, very, very similar to the architecture of the uh, river basin, except that it, the direction of the flow of water is the other way. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, the river. Sorry, the uh, the, the the botanical tree canopy is uh, a lot more like the river delta. Um, so that's one flow. But there is a second flow um, uh, through this uh, tree architecture. It has to do with the fact that the tree is uh, strong. It's solid. It's made out of wood. Uh, and uh, the wind blows on it. The needs wind to stand blows. Up. Yes, that is uh, something else that flows. Um, the wind is blowing. Uh, and the, meaning the uh, air is moving, the earth is not moving. Uh, momentum or motion flows from the mover to the not mover, uh, to, the, to the stationary. And uh, this, uh, this flow of momentum, uh, in other words, the fast engaging the slow, um, is facilitated by a flow configuration. Uh, we see this uh, in the... Uh, uh, morphology of, uh, of the uh, waves on the surface of the ocean. The waves are such that they're always oriented uh, across or perpendicular to the direction of the wind. The, uh, the, uh, the abandoned ships adrift orient themselves just like the waves. The uh, tabular icebergs um, south of Greenland orient themselves the same way. Um, and guess what? The um, the um, uh, the 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 the, uh, the the botanical tree <laughs> um, places its uh, its um, its uh, water pipes, uh -huh. which are the branches, in uh, in the um, in the wind in the same way, so that with finite size wood, the the tree um, uh, communicates, if you will, in the most efficient way, which means with uh, with uh, without stress concentrations. Um, the stresses so it's distributing that come, the stresses. Correct. Yeah, the stresses that uh, that flow from the uh, from the wind force, which is drag, to the uh, to the ground, which accepts the drag. Uh, so the, then there's two flow systems. There's the the water flow system and the stresses flow system that the trees. Correct. Balancing. So that's one of the interesting coincidences of uh, of uh, design in nature is that one uh, flow configuration. Um, uh, is uh, is good, uh, in fact, exceptionally good f uh, for uh, two uh, flow uh, uh, systems at the same time, water and stresses. We've got questions that have come in here from viewers, Professor Bejan, I want to get to. We we've got a lot more to talk about here. And a reminder to everybody watching that you're invited to participate in this Office Hours conversation. You can send an email to live at duke.edu. You can tweet in your question with the tag Duke Live or post to the Duke University Facebook page. So Jim has asked, does the constructal law apply all the way down to the quantum level? So what's the, the smallest sort of flow that this uh, principle will apply to? Um, the, uh, I, in, in our work with the constructal law, we, uh, we found absolutely uh, no limit to the applicability of the, uh, of the, um, of the idea. Uh, in a meaning applying the constructor law in a predictive sense. Uh, we've applied it uh, all the way from uh, predicting uh, global climate to uh, predicting uh, the, um, the, uh, the diameters of the hair strands on the, on the back of the mouse. Um, Small if, uh, or big. Correct, yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, just like uh, the law of gravitational fall or, uh, or uh, the first and second laws of thermodynamics, uh, they uh, they are, they applied they apply to any system anywhere, 
And so far, um, there has been uh, no uh, published uh, refutation of the constructive law. Uh, 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 scientists who are, uh, um, let's say, uh, familiar with uh, the field that was just mentioned uh, should take a look. Um, but I have to add the, the following observation. The uh, constructive law begins with uh, the word finite size. And uh, I, uh, I thought a great deal about uh, this statement before I published it. And the reason is the following. Um, science uh, began with, uh, with uh, uh, geometry from the, uh, from the um, golden age of Greece and mechanics. Uh, these were uh, macroscopic things. These are uh, the science, the science really of uh, of uh, of uh, drawings. That's geometry. Uh, truths about relationships between drawings, geometry, trigonometry, and so on. And the science of contrivances um, uh, made with those drawings. The contrivances are mechanics. Uh, the word um, mechanics comes from contrivance in Greece, in, in Greek. So. Um, so uh, science developed uh, famously uh, all the way to uh, um, acquiring its uh, laws of thermodynamics um, by, by uh, focusing uh, human attention on, on the uh, macroscopic. And then 200 years ago, mm -hmm. then we continue, 200 years ago for reasons that are still uh, not clear, um, uh, physics uh, became um, uh, entranced in this idea that, uh, that all these things that we know in, uh, in physics must uh, somehow uh, have their origin uh, at uh, smaller and smaller and smaller scales. So uh, during the past 200 years, and especially during the past century, we've had this, uh, okay, let's call it a blind march toward the infinitesimal and the particles and the subparticles and all this other thing. Uh, which, of course, are very useful things. If you look at uh, what's uh, come down the pipe uh, in our uh, technology, mechanics. of course, mm -hmm. in standard of living. However, however, uh, uh, during the noise of this, uh, 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 you know, successful parade or happy parade, one has forgotten where science came from. So, as I wrote in uh, in um, uh, a book in year two thousand, uh, in fact, the last paragraph. I uh, commented on the, uh, on, uh, on the history of physics, and I said that the constructor law is a jolt the other way. It is an invitation to, uh, to look at the, uh, at the whole, at the uh, finite sized things, or if you want, at systems made out of immense numbers of particles, and to question uh, the, the, uh, the principle that stands behind this uh, irrefutable um, phenomenon of nature, which is design. And interestingly, you're saying that the design is not just to inanimate objects, you know, water molecules flowing, and not even just to plants and animals, but to humans and, and what humans design and create, so buildings and uh, cars. And, and if we could take the example of things that fly, mm -hmm. it's, it's in your book, um, to, to help us understand this, you're saying the constructor law is going to apply from everything from a mosquito up through birds up through airplanes. Right. H how is that? Yeah, in fact... That's uh, counterintuitive. Yeah, well, uh, uh, then you can uh, uh, start to imagine how, uh, how excited I was when I made the discovery that uh, everything that flies uh, uh, was designed in accord, in, in accord with the constructor law. Uh, you know, it just happened that way because the law is, uh, is uh, an expression of a tendency in nature. Um, I, uh, I wrote this uh, constructive law prediction of all, uh, of, uh, of all flight uh, as a, uh, on a whim, really, as I was uh, finishing this uh, book in the year 2000. The book is called The Shape and Structure from Engineering to Nature. And um, I, um, I asked first um, um, what... Um, what does it take for a uh, brick to fly at uh, constant speed, at constant altitude? Um, uh, and I answered that um, with, uh, with great ease. In fact, it took uh, less than half a page to predict that... So you're uh, accepting, you're imagining wings on the brick, the mass of the brick. No, I'm imagining nothing. I'm just uh, imagining a mass. You could uh, give that mass the name that you want, okay. uh, uh, insect, the bird, or uh, airplane. 
And uh, but because the you, mass is the key feature. Correct, and then, yes, and the mass in order to to proceed at uh, at uh, constant speed, un unknown constant speed and constant altitude, uh, that mass has to I just I discovered has to have a particular speed, uh, a speed that is a particular multiple of the uh, body mass raised to the power one sixth, and on and on. But this formula, which comes from the constructor law, turns out to um, to do two things. It predicts the speeds of all the uh, objects that uh, are known to fly from the uh, house flight to, uh, to the uh, Boeing 747. But um, it also, for the first time, uh, uh, justifies the plotting of all these speeds on the same graph. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the, uh, the, uh, the beauty uh, that uh, comes from the power of predicting uh, with a constructor law. Uh, one ends up making drawings that were not made before. This, to me as an engineer, is extremely rewarding. Uh, I'm not an entomologist, I'm not an uh, ornithologist, I'm not uh, anything. I'm, I'm okay, I'm a thermodynamicist, yes. that's what I am. And, and so you talk about the proportionality there of mass to velocity with the regard to flying objects. Where does the math come in for the constructor law? I mean, I think when people think of, um, you know, laws of physics, they think, uh, you know, Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration, Einstein's e equals mc squared. H how do you bring the math in? What are the units? I see. Okay, well, that's another um, um, misconception. The, uh, uh, what you just uh, stated is uh, comes from the idea that uh, in order for a truth to be uh, uh, correct, uh, uh -huh. It must be uh, a, a simple formula, a mathematical formula. Uh, formulas are, in fact, shorthand for uh, the other uh, more laborious things, which were uh, uh, demonstrations with uh, nothing more than a ruler and a compass in the Greek geometry. So uh, the formula is, uh, is uh, basically code uh, language for, uh, for saying something and saying it more compactly. Um, it is not necessary for the truth to be spoken uh, with one uh, formula involving uh, three letters, F, mm -hmm. M, and A. Right. Uh, and that is very obvious when uh, you look at the history of the second law of thermodynamics, which okay. essentially says that um, a current by itself uh, cannot flow from, uh, by itself from low to high, meaning it always has a tendency to flow from high to low. The second law of thermodynamics was stated initially this way. In fact, uh, the great vision of Sadiq Arnaud was that heat falls uh, through the engine uh, the way that water falls uh, through the uh, water wheel. Uh, no mathematics. In, uh -huh. No mathematics. The mathematics uh, came uh, a few decades later. Um, it was invented by Clausius, uh, who had, the, in order to, uh, to have a formula of the kind you... Uh, you, uh, you um, requested. Uh, in order to have the formula, he had to define the letters in the formula, and for that reason, Clausius defined entropy. Uh, but even, even, e even after that, Clausius' uh, formula was uh, uh, not an equation, it was an inequality, uh, indicating the one way tendency of uh, currents in nature to flow from high to low. It is here, and I'm glad you bring up this. Uh, it is here uh, um, at the um, at the um, in the discussion of the second law that you see what has been missing. The second law is so. The about, second law of thermodynamics okay. is related to the constructor law. It is. Uh, it is a neighbor. It is okay. not related. There is no kinship between the two. But they together they they make a stronger physics or a bigger tent under which now even more things fit. Uh, so the second law uh, came, of course, from the heat engine, uh, from the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. It came from engineering, uh, and it came, uh, and it uh, accounts obviously for, uh, for uh, uh, in that era, for uh, uh, the uh, where the efficiency of uh, of uh, engine comes from. Uh, but uh, the second law says absolutely nothing about how things should be flowing from, by themselves from high to low. The constructor law uh, accounts for the how. It is with uh, 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 the acquisition of uh, configuration, which 
changes in time in a particular direction so that the configurations, now a movie of them, um, become uh, better and better flowing. And again, if we give people a picture of river, rivers, water flowing from high to low, mm -hmm. over time you get the pattern of the river beds. The, the, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, except that we don't have that. Uh, we don't. We, we don't, can't we go don't back that far. We don't have access to that movie. Uh -huh. Why don't we discuss uh, the heat engine? Uh, this great vision that gave us, in fact, our huge, hugely high standard of living today. Uh, in uh, uh, so, heat engines in the beginning. Right. Now, because of Carnot, we know that uh, things of, of heat falls from high to low through the engine and turns the wheel of the right. engine and makes uh, work and power. Great. Uh, now, we, in, with the constructor law, we, uh, we can predict that this flowing of the heat in order to, uh, to produce work um, had to, to flow through uh, better and better configurations mm -hmm. uh, to flow more and more easily. Well, uh, those better and better uh, flow configurations are all the designs of, of machines that have been parading in front of us uh, through these uh, two very lucky centuries. Uh, if you never thought of that, go to a science museum. There's a great one in Paris. Um, uh, there's one at the University of Chicago, right next to it. Uh, go and take a look at these uh, blueprints, if you wish, which are uh, uh, no different than the, the screens in a movie of how machines uh, have been evolving. In fact, uh, their evolution, the evolution of machines, is the evolution of you and Adrian as human and machine species. So, this is a big topic. We got a couple of questions to come. You're saying that, that machines themselves have evolved to be more efficient, and that's... Uh, Correct. Okay. But we've got a couple of questions that have come in, and um, one is by email from Ron, and he asks, your theory seems to have gotten more attention in Europe than here in the United States. Why is that? Is that, is that true? And then maybe why? Uh, <laughs> um, I, um, I'm an American, mm -hmm. and uh, I do not... Uh, Originally I, from Romania. Yes, and, and I, uh, I, uh, it's, a, it's a story told in the book. Uh, I came here to stay, uh, meaning I ran away, basically. Uh, so uh, that was in 1969. Uh, why, uh, why Europeans... Um, um, uh, behave the way you, uh -huh. well, by this uh, you mean really uh, 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 journal editors, uh, magazine editors, uh, and, uh, and people who give uh, honorary degrees uh, uh, gravitate toward the law of physics is an interesting question. Um, the more interesting one is why uh, the, uh, uh, the, the peer group in, uh, in uh, the United States of America has been uh, slower. Uh -huh. uh, and um, I don't know the answer, although uh, maybe a, a hints of it are uh, given in the chapter called The Design of Academia. So yeah, I invite, you, you apply I, the constructor law yes. to universities. Yeah, basically, uh, so uh, I, I urge you to, to connect your question to, uh, to, uh, to, to, the, to the greater view, which is in the book and in this particular chapter. But... Um, I, uh, but I have to tell you that because of this book, Design in Nature, the, uh, the interest from, uh, from uh, my peers here in the United States has been extremely rewarding. I am, um, uh, in fact, astonished by, uh, by, uh, by the response. And yes, I'm astonished by <laughs> what it took for this <laughs> response or for this dam to break. Now, you've been, and you've been trying to, uh, you came up with the uh, Constructor Law in 19... 96. So for 16 years, you've been attempting to articulate it. Can you talk about that process? Have you been refining the way you explain it? Um, have you even sort of made some amendments to it? How, you know? Uh, well, uh, I've done all those things, but I, uh, one thing I discovered is that uh, the law uh, uh, should not be changed. The law is the, the way in which I published it first in 1996. The only... Uh, uh, two words that I would add in the very beginning of the law would be uh, given freedom, quote unquote, without freedom to change um, a flow system uh, cannot have design. So design uh, without freedom is absolute nonsense. 
um, tell that to uh, an authoritarian dean, for example, um, a person who doesn't give its faculty the freedom to create, well, that person will have uh, no creativity uh, growing under uh, his or her uh, uh, wings. In so, terms of flow of ideas. There you go. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so given freedom, the, um, uh, I have not been attempting uh, anything. The constructed law uh, happened. It happened uh, through an accident, uh, which is the way really ideas happen in the mind. Uh, that the little story is uh, how the book begins. Um, and, um, and ever since, I've been having a lot of fun uh, uh, t telling everybody that uh, I have a secret. Uh, I have a secret, and with it I can predict the future. Because after all, this is what all of us do with, uh, with science, with knowledge. With knowledge, we... Uh, we predict uh, our own future, we design it actually, so that we do not uh, walk off the balcony, we, uh, we, or we don't, know, we don't walk into the wall. We, uh, we do better, better things for ourselves, including these uh, machines from 200 years ago. And uh, so I've been uh, having a great time. And uh, at Duke, uh, I've been extremely fortunate to... Uh, to have the freedom to uh, to do these things uh, and uh, along the way to um, to publish these things successfully in um, uh, in other people's journals in biology in physics in uh, in social dynamics uh, I'm an engineer uh, I'm a thermodynamicist but uh, I was embraced by uh, by peers uh, um, over the entire spectrum of science on all the continents I might add. So it's been you a write, lot of fun. You write textbooks for thermodynamics, and have you begun including the constructal law in textbooks? Yes, the, uh, I included the constructal law from the very beginning in uh, in my um, uh, textbook, Advanced Engineering Thermodynamics. Uh, uh, the constructal law was, uh, in fact, the, the the thickest chapter in the uh, 1997 edition uh, because. Uh, Clearly, um, as uh, the law of design in nature, uh, the constructive law of physics really um, uh, beefs up, uh, it strengthens thermodynamics. Um, by the way, thermodynamicists have been uh, invoking the constructive law from the beginning, beginning with Sadiq Arnaud, actually, uh, without, without recognizing it as a principle. Uh, Sadiq Arnaud, uh, in his... Uh, only publication, his memoirs, uh, which were published after his death, um, spoke of uh, what to do to a design uh, in the future, <laughs> so that the design uh, would be that of a uh, machine that's more and more efficient. He said, avoid this, avoid this, avoid this, avoid this. If I, because I like to make drawings, uh -huh. make drawings according to avoiding these things that he, he mentioned, including friction and other things like that, um, then I end up with a movie of, in fact, predicting the evolution of, uh, of machines in the 200 years that followed. So the constructor law should have been in physics as early as 200 years ago. And, and it's just uh, now, since the last 16 years, you've been popularizing it. In, in describing it, you talk about design and evolve, and, and these words are loaded words in our culture, as you know. Can you talk about Philosophically, how does the constructor law um, relate vis-a-vis -vis the, the concept of intelligent design that God made and in, in ordered the universe? And also then, when you talk about evolved, Darwinian evolution, mutation, natural selection, how does the constructor law, what does it s say about each of those? Well, look, the, um, I, I, um, I had the, the great advantage that uh, uh, I was uh, uh, born in a different language. Uh, Romanian is, a, uh, is a, a Romance language. It is actually extremely close to Italian and to Latin, of course. Uh, it's very, very close to Latin. And uh, in, uh, in uh, Latin, uh, the word design really means drawing. It is a, uh, a noun, um, and it uh, signifies uh, that that you see, the configuration, the image, the, um, the discernible pattern. Uh, in time, uh, you call that rhythm. Um, and so uh, uh, it's pretty obvious, uh, it's not controversial, uh, um, and uh, especially an engineer, uh, as an engineer, uh, I'm in the business of uh, designing things, uh, I, uh, I don't see any problem with using the word. In mm -hmm. English, unfortunately, 
uh, design is also a verb. It is uh, to design, mm -hmm. to uh, make a... Um, a um, the architect's uh, design. Uh, uh, to, de to, to make a, a mental viewing, uh, obviously in the human mind, and with it, after you construct it and attach it to, or you reach it, or you touch it, or you hold it, uh, with it, you, the uh, the naked uh, uh, human, you are uh, more powerful, uh, bigger, uh, live longer, and all these other things that come from uh, from uh, from possessing artifacts. And yes, uh, if you think of uh, design as the verb, then um, uh, to design uh, goes hand in hand with a designer. Uh, I've been a designer throughout my career. Um, well, okay, the constructor law is about the phenomenon of, uh, of design in nature, which is the natural occurrence of these configurations, uh, the uh, configurations that were acknowledged by the old Greeks when they came up with geometry. Uh, it is about nature. It is not Patterns. About, it is about things that happen. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, and is, uh, this, our science is really... Uh, deep down is uh, as clear as uh, geometry. It is the search for the principles that stand behind the images that we see out there and in our minds. Um, this other business, which is uh, to design and the designer, is uh, something entirely different, and uh, particularly uh, the search for the designer. That search is uh, much older. It's called religion. Uh, construct the law is not about that. Uh, my it doesn't work, presume a desire. My, my work in science is not about that. My personal politics is is about only one thing, which is that of uh, of uh, <laughs> of speaking the truth uh, correctly mm -hmm. and uh, not pulling punches. Mm -hmm. Right, and so so that uh, speaks to intelligent design. What about Darwinian evolution? Again, you're using this term "evolve." You're speaking about plants and animals. What? How does the constructual law relate to? Look, Mutation, uh, natural selection. The, uh, uh, again, I go back to uh, to uh, the language in, uh, uh, into which I was born. Uh, evolution, the word, was not invented by Darwin, uh, like revolution, for that matter. Uh, evolution means uh, changes in something that you look at. Uh, the uh, the uh, you can call that growth if you look at uh, the chicken embryo, but uh, uh, the fact that um, Things are something is changing as time is called evolution. Uh, I uh, nobody needs Darwin in order to uh, to to use the word, and I certainly did not need the Darwin in order to uh, to um, uh, to uh, to explain to myself uh, uh, what idea, what principle uh, uh, stands behind all these images. But you would uh, say that constructal law speaks to how animals have changed and adapted over time That's, and plants. Yeah, the constructor law empowers uh, the human mind to, uh, to, uh, to predict, obviously in retrospect, the, uh, the, uh, the movie uh, uh, along which animals came to being what they are today. Mm -hmm. uh, e each animal species uh, is uh, today is uh, one frame, the most recent frame, in its own very long uh, movie of uh, design evolution. Uh, in uh, biology, we do not have the luxury to, uh, to, to sit in a chair and watch the entire movie. But with the constructor law, we, uh, we can do uh, basically everything. We can, uh, we can uh, see where uh, today's design uh, came from. And um, uh, our work, um, um, very, very well-known work now with uh, the evolution of sports uh, is, uh, is really an attempt to show how, in fact, uh, we, the living, can uh, witness uh, biological evolution in our own lifetime. Uh, We've got a question that's come in uh, vaguely related to this, and uh, a reminder to everybody watching that you can participate in this Office Hours conversation by email to live at duke.edu. You can tweet in your question with the tag Duke Live or post the Duke University Facebook page. So Andrew from Asheville has asked, is humanity's seemingly destined progression towards space travel, a flow of the Earth mass into space, does that mean that space is a better place to evolve or survive in the future, or are we relegated to our planetary conditions as a limit to our physical evolution? So predictions. Uh, does Constructor Law say anything about people leaving Earth? 
uh, leaving now, uh, 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 but uh, yes, uh, uh, expanding or uh, flying higher and higher. Yes, uh, uh, in fact, this uh, this topic is um, is uh, addressed uh, at length in in this book and our in our journal articles. Uh, it um, uh, okay, uh, humanity is a uh, uh, flow system on the uh, spherical uh, landscape. It is. Uh, uh, the constructor law uh, says that uh, that this uh, flowing mass, just like the mass of elephant mass uh, in the migrations in uh, southern Africa, um, uh, is destined to, uh, to to flow uh, more and more easily. From this comes the uh, evolution of technology and uh, science and alphabet and uh, iPhones and all that. Um, but it is. Uh, also destined to uh, to evolve toward uh, reaching farther, um, going there faster and more economically. To, to and put a far, marker there. And farther and farther means not only east and west; it also means upward, Up and down. upward and down, uh, downward. And so, uh, if you get that idea, then say, "Whoa, wait a minute! This is actually what's been happening uh, when, uh, in the biosphere as a novelty on Earth." You know, biosphere is um, a sphere that's more recent than the hydrosphere and the lithosphere. Um, the, uh, the, the moving of, uh, of animal mass has been, in fact, spreading and becoming more and more efficient. Spreading what? Uh, from uh, from uh, the oceans uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to terrestrial locomotion on land and then uh, from land... Uh, uh, the moving, the move, the moving got even more powerful and more complicated uh, through uh, through flight, uh, and uh, and it only uh, it, it goes it stands to reason that this um, direction of uh, uh, evolution of movement will continue in both directions, um, uh, upward into space and also downward. People are exploring more and more now the depths of the. Um, uh, Mariana Trench and uh, all these other places that uh, are still uh, um, unknown uh, uh, to us. Uh, so um, you touched on knowledge being connected to movement. That's that's sort of a whole other topic to get into. I, we got another question that's coming in from a viewer here, and Stuart wants to know how has your work benefited from interdisciplinary dialogue and engagement. You've had to do a lot of that, starting out in thermodynamics and then touching these many disciplines. Well, look, actually, this is a fantastic question, and uh, um, it, uh, it it really gives the answer to uh, f uh, to, uh, to to other uh, items that came up earlier. One mm -hmm. is uh, why um, there is a resonance from uh, okay media in Europe, um, and the other one um, uh, it was about uh, why I feel very fortunate to be a Duke. Um, in Europe, uh, education in um, in uh, in uh, middle school and high school is uh, is uh, very serious. It is uh, multidisciplinary. Uh, the student is exposed to, uh, I would say, every week to not only to uh, to geometry and analysis uh, and physics and chemistry and all these other things we know about, but also to zoology. Um, uh, history, uh, geography, uh, um, and of course botany and biology. All these things are uh, are a part of uh, what's known as uh, a European education. And naturally, uh, a book uh, like Design and Nature, but also uh, a a principle uh, with the reach of uh, the constructor law, uh, sounds. Uh, uh, not only familiar, but attractive to those who have been, in fact, uh, raised the way I was raised. Uh, now I come to Duke, uh, and at Duke, uh, we have these people who are uh, uh, so uh, sociologists and philosophers of science and, uh, and, and professors of medicine and economists. They, uh, they are all around me. Uh, and they talk to me. I run into them. Uh, they live on my street. They, uh, <laughs> I am their patient <laughs> when I go to the Duke Hospital. Look, Duke, Duke is, uh, well, it's a secret that's worth uh, keeping, actually. Uh -huh. it's, a, it's an oasis of, uh, of, uh, of intellectual freedom. And um, my work has benefited greatly from this, uh, from this uh, great stroke of luck. 
Great. So I want to get to, in terms of the, the idea of propagating, this is something we've been talking about. And it, it's a big claim to say this is a law of nature. People have missed it up to now. So I think, you know, understandably, um, you say in here, an irony of the constructal law is that it is a scientific principle that challenges scientific orthodoxy while confirming impressions of the world held by non-scientists. Right. So talk about the reception of this idea that's, it's, you're saying it's a scientific law, it has big predictive explanatory power. How, kind of, what's, what's your case that yes, this is a, a law of nature and that people well, will, will the, see that over time? Well, the, uh, uh, the case, uh, uh, there is a law of nature. Uh, uh, we have made uh, for f 15 years in peer review publications and we continue to make that case based on uh, anonymous peer review. Uh, we predicted with the constructor law all sorts of things that, uh, that um, okay, a mechanical engineer should, uh, should never be allowed to predict. You know, going from the, from the hair on the back of the, of the, of the mouse to uh, predicting a global climate to uh, predicting or explaining really um, how uh, snowflakes uh, should be even though at first uh, sight they, uh, they, uh, they look like nothing is flowing through them um, and that's wrong. Uh, predicting uh, when um, uh, droplets of blood should uh, splat as opposed to splash. Um, predicting the river basin configuration, uh, all the uh, everything that's known about animal locomotion. Predicting that at the Beijing Olympics, the uh, winners in the sprint on land and in water should be uh, should be uh, taller. Um, um, I, I, uh, I, I, look, uh, we've 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 been doing uh, all these things, uh, and uh, the law. Sorry, the case for uh, this law of nature is uh, is well made. There is no uh, no, and that is why uh, this law is now uh, uh, being accepted. The the news that uh, you read are about uh, about acceptance, not about uh, controversy. Um, but the, your question began in a very, uh, very, um, very interesting way. It is uh, about how does it feel when you tell people here's a law of nature that uh, should have been uh, known and used uh, for 200 years. Uh -huh. It's been overlooked. Well, uh, what do people say? I don't tell know. Them I don't know. Uh, I can tell you how it feels because uh -huh. it um, it uh, makes me understand how the little boy uh, felt uh, on the sidewalk when he screamed, uh, "Look, uh, the emperor wears no clothes." <laughs> uh -huh. Um, it is the truth, um, and uh, but it takes a um, basically a nobody from <laughs> from where I come from <laughs> to uh, to say it. And but after I said it, uh, the world is is, is speaking back and uh, responding with, "Look, uh, everybody knows. Uh, this is the common people. Uh, everybody knows that uh, that." Uh, it is wise to uh, well seek uh, the path of least resistance. It is wise to be thrifty. It is wise to uh, well if you can't beat them, join them. Mm -hmm. um, um, it is uh, well the rich get the richer. This is a hierarchy. Uh -huh. It's a, it's another word for uh, uh, design with complexity. Um, all the roads lead to Rome. Uh, all these things are truths that uh, that the children get from their parents and grandparents. Why? Because obviously they're true, but also because they're useful. They empower the uh, the growing uh, uh, human being to uh, to uh, design for itself and for herself a a obviously architecture always morphing uh, for better better movement on the landscape uh, throughout a lifetime. That's that's the uh, the uh, the uh, the big picture of how the constructor law empowers the individual, uh, and if you get it, then you see uh, even bigger things. You see where uh, 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 city design comes from, meaning uh, urbanism. Uh, you see where government comes from. You see the rule of law as a uh, basically a very short. Uh, uh, name for a highly complex and always morphing and perfecting uh, flow architecture because uh, after all the flow architecture means both the mud and the river channels and uh, uh, the rule that um, some of you water have to flow through the channels while uh, the rest of you water uh, wait in the mud. 
uh, this is the rule of law in the river basin. Well, our movement on the landscape, uh, and that includes, uh, uh, it, it's also called uh, economics and business and uh, security these days, uh, is, uh, is with, with, uh, with channels and uh, government is that. And, and that's, that's all in the book. That's it, yeah. I want to wrap up with a little bit uh, lighter question. We've touched on you know, governments and rivers and trees and airplanes. To basketball, uh, we've got an email question here from Jack who says, I've read that you think the constructive law can explain which teams end up doing well in the NCAA National Basketball Tournament. As we enter the second week of this year's tournament, do you think that that's been true and who is your favorite to win? Well, the, uh, <laughs> look, the, uh, the constructor law, when the, which begins with the words finite size in, the, uh, in, uh, in this realm of uh, basketball competition, refers to, uh, to the uh, broad view, the big picture. Everybody in this, uh, in this, uh, uh, on this landscape of uh, would-be winners, all of them basketball players uh, and uh, basketball programs, um, it is about the entire flow system from the from the uh, area, which is the whole uh, USA, to the final four, and then uh, the winner of that. So, in this particular flow system, um, the argument that's uh, fully, fully, and heavily documented in the, in the, my work is that the channels have uh, have um, um, have uh, formed in a, in a very good uh, fashion for the past 100 years. So they're uh, recruiting channels, recruiting, co coaching. Uh, uh, staff. You can call them fame. You can call uh, well uh, the uh, the uh, basketball coach in elementary school knows uh, where to look for uh, or where to guide the, the talent and all that. So for that reason, uh, meaning hierarchy is uh, is rigid uh, or uh, immutable. Uh, it is part of nature. So. Um, the prediction that um, uh, I can, it's pretty obvious with the constructor law, is that the hierarchy of, uh, of a college basketball will, uh, will not change at all uh, from year to year. That is the prediction. The fact but that different teams win different yeah, years. Different, uh, different from the, from the uh, chosen few mm -hmm. uh, will, <laughs> will win from year to year. And, but the, uh, among the chosen few, there are even fewer <laughs> that are chosen even more carefully, and those fewer uh, win more frequently. So in, um, in this uh, particular um, uh, game, you can um, basically uh, um, uh, use my words and, uh, and, uh, and express your preference. But, uh, so you don't have one team to tell us, but over time, strong teams stay strong. No, but strong. I will not be at all surprised if uh, a, a, a perennial winner wins again. Okay. That's that's because that's the way it is. Oh, that's uh, my favorite. Yeah. Good. Professor Bejan, thank you for taking all this time to answer questions and explain your work. It's great to have you here. Thank you. Adrian Bejan is the J.A. Jones Distinguished Professor of Mechanical Engineering at Duke's Pratt School of Engineering. He is the author of Design and Nature with Peter Zane. You can learn more about the Constructal Law at constructal.org. A recording of this Office Hours conversation, along with many other Duke videos, will be available on the Duke On Demand website. That's ondemand.duke.edu. Produced by Duke University. Online at duke.edu.